Thank you so much for joining us here today. It's my pleasure. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for hosting me. Yeah, so first off, I'd like to know what inspired you to form the Tannhauser Company Film Preservation Incorporated. Well, I grew up with my grandfather telling me, or my father telling me, that my grandfather was in the film business, but none of the films that they made survived. And so I went for years believing that no evidence, no film from my grandparents' studio survived. But I saw a television program in 1986 where they showed the Thanhauser film on the screen. And I finally realized that even though my grandfather burned all of the negatives, every negative made 30 or 40 prints. And the prints, in some cases, luckily, were saved. So that started me on a journey to go find surviving prints that were made from the negatives that he destroyed. And over the 1,000 plus films that they made, I found over 250 surviving prints. So I've traveled the world, I found prints, and I bring many of those prints to uh, people to see on DVD and online. And then I made a documentary about the studio history by researching um, their history from 1910 to 1917 in the films that they made. That's wonderful. So according to you, why is it important to preserve silent films and for all future generations to learn about them? Well, I think it's important to understand where we came from in cinema. There were pioneers in cinema that developed different techniques for making films, like D.W. Griffith pioneered cross-cutting, uh, or even before that, Edwin Porter in The Great Train Robbery is a great example of cross-cutting you know, between you know, the, the heroine in trouble and the rescue party on the way, and they cut back and forth. So learning how these techniques were originally developed helps set the standards by which you'll see in today's films. So learning about film technique through how the pioneers did it really helps us become better filmmakers. Right. So most of the techniques used in filmmaking today have been derived or have evolved from uh, the earlier days of cinema. Do you think this fact is often overlooked? Yes, I think so, because people don't have a perspective of what happened in the early days of film. It's just like, you know, uh, unless you understand where we came from, uh, you're not going to appreciate how we got here or understand the basics and the depth that was put into developing these techniques. Right. So as technology has advanced, digi digital filmmaking has gained more dominance and it poses a certain amount of threat to film. So what do you think about this film versus di video debate? Film versus video? Well, you know, there's some real proponents of film that are coming back. Um, Christopher Nolan, for example, is a big proponent of film. Um, you know, he shot Dunkirk on film. But I think one of the things that's happened since the beginning of filmmaking is that the barriers to entry have gone down significantly, and digital film really took away most of the barriers. When, when film when you just had film and no digital, you know, it was very expensive to buy the film, shoot the film, and then to process the film. And then editing film was very time consuming. You had to cut the pieces of film, put them together. But with digital, you can do nonlinear film. You're just burning pixels. You don't have to go out and pay money to have film purchased or processed. So it really reduced the entry level of what it takes to make a film but the basic techniques still apply. But when you look at film versus digital, there's a richness on film, especially with today's most modern technology for film versus digital, you'll see uh, a real richness in the texture and the color depth that many people don't think you can get with digital. Right. So what according to you is the difference between dramatic cinematography and documentary cinematography? Well, you know, the uh, Dramatic cinema is basically storytelling like a novel, where someone makes up a story or takes some events in real life and puts together a fictional story. Whereas a documentary film actually captures reality. And it's up to the filmmaker in a documentary film to make that uh, story come alive, to tell what happened as opposed to a made up narrative. 
So you founded, you co-founded the International Youth Silent Film Festival in 2014. Right. How does an event like this ensure youth participation, especially in the industry of silent films? Well, I think one of the things about the International Youth Silent Film Festival is we celebrate silent film, which is where it all started. We challenge the youth to make a three-minute silent film. We give them a soundtrack. There's 10 different themes that they can pick from. And the students can focus on telling the story in three minutes to tell the story. And that's really the key, is to be able to tell the story in three minutes. The audio activities, you know, the, the soundtrack, that can be very complicated and very problematic. We take that out of the realm of the filmmaker and have them focus on telling the story, shooting the shots, and editing it together. Thank you so much for joining with us today, sir. We think you're doing a great service by um, preserving the art of silent films. And we wish you all the best for all your future endeavors. And we hope to see you here again. Well, thank you very much. I hope that the students uh, at the uh, Maripal University uh, find it an opportunity to make a silent three-minute film and submit it to our festival. We'd love to see people win and come to Portland, Oregon for our international festival in June next year. We'd love to contribute. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sir.